Welcome to Executive Education in Sustainable Fashion. Today we're going to talk to Francois Souchet about the work that he is doing at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, trying to convert the industry into a circular economy. Hi everyone and welcome to the Executive Programme in Sustainable Fashion. I'm very delighted to be joined here by Francois Souchet, I hear from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So maybe we'll start off by just giving us a bit of introduction, how you became part of the foundation and a little bit of your background. I've, so I have a background in engineering and project management. And through my studies, I became very interested in how can we build an economy that actually works for the long term, both from an economic perspective, but also for everything that comes around the social, the environmental mm -hmm. aspect that are linked to it. And um, when I when I learned about the circular economy, I really found that this was a model that was actually answering that question. What could be this potential model? And that's um, how I found out about the foundation, and that's how I joined them. Super. So let's so think about what circular economy is. How would you really framework it or describe it? And, and why is it really important for us to really think about this circular economy yeah. now in fashion? I think the the best way to think about the circular economy is to contrast it with the economy that we currently have. Today, the, economy, the way the economy works is extremely linear. We take materials of the ground, we extract materials, basically. We transform them into products that we use less and less mm. before discarding them mostly in the landfill. So that's very linear. We just go throughput and throughput and throughput. And in a linear economy, actually, in a circular economy, so when you move from a linear economy to a circular economy, basically, you, you do three things, mostly. The first one is when you design your product, you, you don't think only about how that product looks, but you look at how that product fits within a system. You design out waste and pollution by just thinking about your product and the system it fits in a different way. Mm. The second thing you do is you ensure that the products that you make and where you put a lot of effort to actually manufacture, engineering, transport those products, you ensure that those products stay in use for as long as possible. And the last thing is, if you, ha if you are dependent on uh, resources that you can grow, basically, like, uh, agricultural output, for example, um, you basically ensure that the way you grow those is done in a regenerative way. So basically, you can grow it over and over and over again. So it sounds like there's like three impacts or touch points within this circular economy yes. that you can address. So think about that foundation. What is, what is the mission or, or what is the sort of the foundation really hoping to achieve and address and be a part of this new solution? So the foundation was established in the Ellen MacArthur Foundation was established in 2010 with a simple mission, accelerate the transition to a circular economy. So our sole purpose is to really support business, governments and educators in accelerating that transition to a circular economy. So we work with businesses on what are the pre-competitive collaboration that you mm -hmm. could uh, undertake to really move towards a circular economy, and what are the industry-wide solutions that you could implement at your own scale that would really mean um, uh, that would be really meaningful in the transition to a circular economy. We have we bring also um, cities and governments around the table so they can understand what this transition means and think about the policies that they can uh, implement. And the last thing we do is inspire the next generation of leaders, whether it's in design, in business, in engineering. We really want to give them the tool to think differently about how the economy should work. So it's really like a support network. It's a resource. Absolutely. It's really a go-to to be able to, as a company or as a business, an executive or even as a student, to get knowledge about how they can be more circular. Absolutely. So, so what sort of steps do you think in the fashion industry or for companies Companies, they could be taken. I know you've mentioned a few already, but maybe you can expand a little bit on what sort of steps can the fashion industry take to be even more circular? Yeah. So the, maybe the first thing we can do is think about what circular economy means for the fashion industry. So when, when we think about a circular fashion industry, we basically think of a fashion industry where clothes are made from safe and renewable materials, are used a lot more than they are today, mm -hmm. and never become waste. And when we looked at how the fashion industry works today, it really doesn't work like that. The production of clothes doubled over the past 15 years, while the average number of time we use the clothes that we wear decreased by close to 40%. Oh, wow. So we use less and less, we produce more and more. Every year, there's over 70% of the clothes that we have that end up in the landfill or incinerated. That's a rate of approximately a truckload going to landfill or incineration every second. Wow. 
and most of the materials that are inputted in the in the industry are basically oil based and uh, non-renewable and at times even um, harmful like the um, if you think about non-iron shirts you know like those shirts that like are very convenient actually well the 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 molecule that makes them uh, non-iron has been classified by the world health organization as mm. a pot potential uh, cancerogenic and has been added to the list of uh, banned chemicals uh, from the european union mm. So the, really this idea of a secular fashion industry is clothes made from safe and renewable materials, used more, never become waste. So you've been working with, I know, a lot of big organizations as well as small organizations, but maybe thinking about some of the big organizations and partners you've been working with, what are some of the things they're really addressing? Or I don't know if you can share some examples of some of the, the organizations and partnerships you've been working with the foundation. Fundamentally, the, the first thing the organization do in, in general is have this moment of realization so you realize that actually this new model that you look at makes a lot of sense for mm -hmm. who you are and once once you do that the the key things organization are doing is trying it out so doing a few pilots experimenting uh, yeah. experimenting absolutely so um if if you just take one example you could see for example for h and m um they've piloted a repair store in their paris uh, flagship mm -hmm. um that enables them to see how their customers react to those new type of offerings to like understand how that fits within their current offering um etc so really like this idea of piloting but also this idea of understanding what are the more like boom steps that you can take and that's that's what we work on with them it's okay well how can you do things that are meaningful and have enough scale to really create impact of course. and what level of ambition should we have in the steps that we take moving forward so that actually we start properly mitigating the potential impact of the industry. So when we looked at um, the current trajectory on which the industry is and what impact it could have, we realized that by 2050, the fashion industry could represent 25% of the carbon budget allocated with the Paris ambition. Mm -hmm. So that's gigantic. That's big, yeah. And so if, if you think about that, that kind of exponential impact that it can have, what are the exponential solutions that should sure. be developed? in parallel to start really preventing that from happening. So it's all about the foundation really wants to make that long-term impact, uh, the long-term being responsible and accountable, but then really making a solution. Um, and, you know, so as a large organization, what about smaller organizations or new business models like, you know, the real real or yeah. different sort of methods and system that they've incorporated in that system? Yeah, so if for, for small organizations, what's very interesting is they have in a way, more flexibility because their their businesses are not as like solidified mm -hmm. as large organizations. Um, but because they have smaller teams, um, any effort actually requires a lot more proportionally sure, yeah. from the organization. When we think about small organization, what what they can do, the first thing is bring your customer on the journey. Usually, if you're like a, a so, an, an SME, you have a closer relationship to your um, to customers. Your clients, yeah. So how do you bring them on the journey that you start to undertake? The second thing you can do and the thing that will have the most impact is to really think about your product. How do you design your product? And when you design that product, do you think about how it's going to be used? Do you think about how long it's going to be used? How can you make sure that this product can be used, reused, repair, mm -hmm. and resold? And when you design that product also, do you think about what's next for it? Do you think about what is going to happen to that product once you stop? Once people stop using it, is it going to be recycled? Is the fabric just going to be recovered? Like what, what do you see uh, happening to that product? And the last point that so that you can uh, do if you're a small business is don't do it alone. Think about the partnerships oh, that yeah. you can have. Um, there's there are people who are uh, specialized in reverse logistics. There are people who are specialized in mm. um, in different business models, for example. And and a good partnership that we saw is um, we well, actually saw quite a few. But you have, for example, Reformation and Thread Up who partner yes. together. So Reformation is a young fashion brand 
ThreadUp is a second-hand uh, online uh, store. And basically, they have this um, this partnership where if you bring some uh, reformation uh, clothes on ThreadUp, you actually get a discount on the new reformation. And uh, Stella McCartney and the Real Real, the Real Real being an online consignment luxury consignment website, um, have the same type of partnerships. If you bring some Stella McCartney and ensure that they have a second life, you actually get a discount to uh, to Stella. So it sounds like you know for all us for us to be able to you know create this circular economy and, and create stronger impact, we have to really share resources, we have to work together as a community and really together we can make a huge difference and, and that seems to be where the foundation is really placed at this point in time. Exactly. So what are some of the challenges though of course, you know, when anything you try to think of as a new business model or when you're looking into this type of circular economy, what are some of the challenges and how can we overcome them? Yeah. So. The, the, the main thing for us is really to bring people to realize that if you want to move towards a circular economy, it's, it's a massive opportunity. It's an economic opportunity to do better business fundamentally. It's an opportunity also to reconnect with your customer. Customer are evolving and the pace at which a lot of the brands are evolving is slower than the pace at which their customer are evolving. So how do you reconnect with them? Um, mm. and, and the last point is also proactively meet potential future regulations, especially in, in Europe and the UK where policymakers start to make real movement towards a uh, circular economy. So that opportunity, we feel, is the most important thing companies need to um, grasp because once you sense that it's a big opportunity, no challenge is too big to not sure. overcome, right? Of course. Now, the, the challenge that you face, especially with large corporations, are the kind of classic challenge, transformation challenge that you would face mm -hmm. in any organization transformation, right? So um, change management, convincing senior stakeholder, the question of, well, if we want to move towards a new business model where we embrace vintage or second hand or rental, what are the cannibalization risks that we can have? What are the potential reaction of our customers? Um, and um, and also, <clears throat> one of the key challenges also is that you have some solutions that are available. So if you think about better materials or recycled materials, the key challenge today is that those materials are significantly more expensive than of course, virgin yeah. ones. And um, when you look at um, I, I was reading something this morning that was saying the price between standard cotton and organic cotton is three to five times higher. Mm. So those are significant difference and companies who want to embrace those solutions have to assess what's the business case for it, uh, what's the kind of how can you market that, how can you actually protect your your business and, and your and your margins while embracing those solutions. And coming back to the power of coming together to really affect change. Well, if you come together, the, the economies of scale that you have on some of those solutions will be realized much faster because, well, actually the demand for them, of course, will be um, will be stimulated at a much broader way than if you're just one company trying to do it on your own. Yeah, and if you're doing it as a group, then that, that noise and that, that, exactly. that awareness becomes greater. And when everybody does it, the so of first mover risk, like being the yeah, one who stands out of the pack yeah. is is kind of diminished. So if everyone does it and the bar is raised for everyone, mm -hmm. then everyone's got s still a similar cost structure. So it doesn't necessarily impact competition as well. So thinking about, and I think you touched on it a little bit, you have the consumer and the companies and, and sometimes the companies are a little bit ahead of it. Sometimes the consumers are wanting it a bit more. Where, where do you see that sort of yin and yang happening? Is it really for the you know, the customer and the company to work together? Is it more like the company putting it out there? Is it the consumer wanting it as a value and a need? Like, So when, when you look at what drives c consumer behavior, price and convenience are the top two. And they come way ahead of any sort of other consideration. And if price and convenience are not here, sustainability mm. is still important, but it's no longer really a decision factor. Okay. So what brands have to do is to innovate towards a better um, a better model, 
keeping in mind that what will make their customer willing to keep on coming back is that notion of price and convenience, which is why you have like, um, for example, companies like Rent or Runway that are very yeah. successful because the convenience of not having to browse, not having to pay every time, not of having course, yeah, to yeah. think about what you can wear, that, that, that potential they have to suggest items for you. Um, and now that they have stores in New York City, you can just go after the gym, select your outfit of the day and off you go. That convenience is appealing to a lot of people. And when mm -hmm. you have surveys asking, oh, why do you, why do you choose Unlimited by Randall Runway? People are saying it's just much more convenient. It just takes up the pain yeah. of having to shop, having to think about how you're going to look. It just, it's there. So think about the, the, the future of the fashion industry in this circular economy. What are you hoping as a foundation you know, to really try to move that forward in which direction and, and how? Yeah, so for us, the, the guiding light is to really keep that vision in mind. That vision where clothes are made from safe and renewable materials are used more and never become waste. And what we hope is that we can create a thriving industry where businesses still have enormous economic opportunities, where the clothes that we produce are used more and are circulated between people. So let's say I like to wear my jeans quite used. Some people like to wear their jeans quite old. Well, sure. you can actually, instead of like aging them, you can actually circulate them. A company uh, called Redon in LA is doing it very well. They take vintage Levi's, and one of the, the things that prevents some people from going to vintage is the fact that the fabric is a bit looser and so the cut mm -hmm. is not as sharp. What they do is they completely rework the cut of those jeans, sell them again, and so actually it's right. a vintage aspect, but with a like beautiful cut. So so when, when we think about how a second economy is gonna look, it's gonna be a lot of small businesses, a lot of innovation, a lot of opportunities to do things with the materials that are already in circulation and a lot of opportunities coming from uh, understanding the difference between new to you and new to the world and actually new to you is more important. So, so if, I'm a, if I'm a company out there, if I'm a, a senior executive and, and I want to be you know, involved in the foundation or, or find out you know, how can I be working with you as a partner, is there certain guidelines? Do you look for anything particularly in a company? Is it some sort of measure you're looking for? Yeah. For, for us, um, what's really important when we work with businesses is to have a shared direction of travel. So if we share the same vision, um, for us that's the fundamental aspect. So if you believe in a circular economy, if you believe that this vision we have for the future of the industry is right and something you aspire to move towards. That's the main thing we want. The second thing that we are interested in is also to understand what as a business you are ready to do to uh, move towards the circular economy. So either um, what's your existing track recall mm -hmm. or what are the things that you plan or you envision to do in your business to actually move towards there. Because for us what's really important is to have partners who want to take actions, who want to do yeah. uh, and and make this vision happen. I think you're right about that, that taking action is now the, the biggest next step. Absolutely. And we're aware of it, we, 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 we believe in it, um, the knowledge is out there and it's now making it, you know, something tangible and actionable. Absolutely. So we can make that change. Yeah. And and that's one thing we've done uh, when we worked um, as, as a foundation with uh, the plastics packaging industry. So we had a similar initiative to uh, the one on fashion with uh, the plastics packaging industry that started um, two years earlier. So it's now much more advanced. And what they have done is they have actually mobilized a global commitment from 20% of the plastics packaging industry to ensure that the packaging they put on the market is reusable, compostable, or recyclable. Mm. And that's global. And in addition to that, there are also um, governments who have implemented Plastics Pact that basically take those commitments at a national level and put together the mechanism to make it happen. Wow. So that you start to really see then an industry movement towards um, the vision. Which is what we're interested in. So yeah, so th thinking about that sort of, you know, that that sort of timeline of becoming circular, uh, yeah. you know, as a company. I mean, it, it must be quite varied based on the organisation and based on what they're trying to implement. But is there is there sort of a, a not a deadline, but like you know, you can keep going on and on and on. Yeah. But then when do you get to a point where you be so uh, hang on a sec? Yeah. So the the um, that the the kind of 
thinking we have around how do you really change an industry, we see that as a sort of 10 year okay. period, right? So if you really want to be able to impact how the industry works, you need 10 years. You need around three years to understand what are the solutions that you should prioritize implement at scale mm -hmm. and how they're going to be implemented. And then you need another seven years to make those happen. Yeah, because I think some you know, executives or companies, they get quite pressured in thinking, what do I have to do tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think the key thing is to be reflective on what are you doing now yeah. for the whole organization, using the support from the foundation or other resources and methods, Absolutely. and then plan a bit more in ahead. That's, that seems like exactly. what the foundation likes to support. Absolutely. So what, what we, we we always say when people join us that we're not we're not interested in incremental change. We're not interested in what you can do tomorrow that will have a, that will improve your bottom line or mm -hmm. like your your CO two emission a tiny bit, but actually um, won't really add up to real change. What we are interested in is thinking about what are the steps that you can take that may take two years to mobilize, three years to mobilize, but that will add up to significant change. Mm -hmm. And so that really is what we're interested in. What are the hard problems to solve? What are the like, kind of big, hairy problem where yeah. there's no obvious solutions? And what are the things that industry can do in a kind of longer period of time to really change that? So just some advice for the, for the audience. We're going to have executives and, and students. And what are some of the, I don't know, some advice you would give them, you know, from, three or four key principles to say, this is what you need to think about in your organization or mm. in what you're doing. So I think the, the first thing you can think about is how do you design your product and how do you design the system that goes around? So basically, is your product going to be something that people only want to wear a short period of time or something that they want to love for a long time? And based on that, what's the business model that can support it? What are the materials that you should use in it? And what happens to it once you stop using it? So I think those questions are the key ones you need to ask mm -hmm. and to start answering for your company. And once you start answering them, you can connect the dots between how do you design, how do you make business, and what are the partnerships that you can take so that this product, what you decide for its next, is actually happening what you actually want to achieve through its life is also happening. Great. Well, well thank you so much, Francois, for joining thank us. Thank you very much. And thanks for the amazing work you're doing with the foundation. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you for joining us. And please keep this conversation going um, offline through WeChat. And please provide any questions that you want us to answer. Thanks for watching. Now join us online and on social media with our experts so we can answer your questions directly and keep this conversation going.